Right, check out this chart. This little baby, <laughs> it's a classic, right? We're talking rates today. So um, this is what happens when uh, central banks kind of face the music. It doesn't happen that often, you know, and there's a whole thing of don't fight the Fed, right? Don't fight your central bank, right? But uh, today, the Australian central bank lost. They lost a lot, right? This is the two-year Australian bond, right? The other day, it's a weekly, like last week, there's a bit of a hoo-ha in Australia, right? Because this bond has been pegged at basically 0.1%, right? Um, yeah, 0.1% by the RBA, right? They've kind of said, look, this yield control uh, program, they're buying this bond because at the time when they started, it was a three-year bond. They wanted to keep you know, longer-term rates low to help mortgages, to boost housing, right? Of course, it's been a ridiculous housing boom in Australia. Good job on the RBA, right? So they've basically helped create an asset bubble. Anyway, this bond, of course, has ticked down the curve, so it's less and less relevant because it's only two and a half years now rather than three years. And also, the RBA owns like 60% of it, so they own 20 out of the 30 billion in issue, on issue, right? Then to top it off, this two and a half year bond was yielding like you know 0.1%. The three year bonds six months later were yielding you know 0.8%, right? Which implies a six month rate from that two and a half to three years, around about five percent. So it's ridiculous. So they're creating massive distortion in the market. So they had made a few mistakes, right? They picked a bond in part of the curve that over time. Back then it was three years, right? But now it's only two and a half years maturity, right? Which is why it's got the ticker of a two-year bond rather than the three-year when they started. So they picked a, an instrument, right, with a time on it, which was relevant at the time, less and less as time went on. And they picked a level which then became ridiculously out of whack with the rest of the yield curve. And they manipulated it, bought so much of it, they owned 60% of it, which made it less and less relevant in financial markets anyway. And then the market started saying, dudes, you guys are out of touch, right? And last week it shot up to like 20 basis points. And the RBA, Reserve Bank of Australia, came in on Friday and bid it from 20 basis points back to a, back to 10, right? You know... So that 10 point, that bill, so that's sort of 20, 10 points on like a billion dollars over two years, right? So, not to mention the other 30 billion that they own. And then, of course, the inflation numbers came out and everyone said, dudes, you guys are a bunch of losers. You're a bunch of technocrats and you're wrong. And you've got your head stung up, your fat ones. And of course, what happened? The bonds blew out. Two year bonds in one day, pretty much well, yeah, one day, a couple of days, right? From 12 points up to 50 points, right? So that's 40 points. So they had 40 points just on that one bill. That's like $8 million, right? Over two years or whatever, right? Let alone, but they've got, instead of that, they've got 30 times that in their book, right? So 30, 30 billion times, you know, 40 points over two years, right? So what's it? $240 million, something like that, I can't remember. But anyway, a lot of money, right? Now, this is just the start of it, right? We start going back. That looks like a massive move, right? You know, from you know, 10 basis points up to 40, right? Up to 50, right? But, you know, there's a long way to go on this little cookie, right? This is going back 1989, all the way back, right? And it's we're just here. This is peanuts, right? When these things, when this thing breaks, right? On the technicals, anyway, it's going here. 140. So it's got at least another 100 points to go, right? We're worrying about the first four. It's got another 100 to go. Then it's going to go here, right? 220. It might not go much, I mean, and that's inflation, right? Two to three is where we're taking inflation. So even if it goes there, right, as a central bank, right? This, this is the Australian central bank, but this is an example of central banks worldwide, right? Even if it goes just here, right, that's just to keep up with inflation. On the technicals, 
we're looking more like here, which is like 4%, which would imply, you know, they're saying, say, 2.5% inflation, 1.5% real rates. What's that going to do to the market, mate? I was reading up about the, um, uh, you know, the um, dot-com explosion. Now, one, let's go back to log scale on this one. Now, one of the things that was talked about here that popped the bubble here, there's a few, right? One of them was the raising of interest rates that Greenspan did. And he started raising rates through here. The curve flattened, inverted. I'm not sure if inverted, but flattened, right? Um, but the short terms were being, short term rates were rising. That's kind of what's happening here. The other one, of course, is ridiculous valuations. Now, when we talk about ridiculous valuations, right? This move here, this just this first leg down right, in, in, in October, that was, I think, around about one and a half to two trillion dollars, like that move, right? just that, that move in that first month or so. Now, funnily enough here, we've got two ridiculous things that add up to two trillion dollars. One is Bitcoin, right, which has got zero intrinsic value. The only value is that other people want to buy it from you, right? Because they think other people want to buy it from them. And then Tesla, which is a trillion dollars. Now, Tesla produces half a million cars a year out of a worldwide production of 80 million, I think it is. And their market cap is basically the same as the, as the next 10 biggest car companies globally. And they're Tesla's PE ratio, it's like 500 times or something like that, right? So sure their sales might grow, but when their market cap is as big as the next 10 companies, you're kind of saying that these guys are going to make as many cars, essentially, as those next 10 companies. Now next, next, those next 10 companies make, you know, so it's around about like 50 million cars a year. Tesla makes 500,000. Do you really think Tesla is going to increase production like from half a million to 50 million over the next couple of years to justify that 500 times P ratio and billion dollar valuation and those other car companies are gonna sit by and just get flogged for a product that has got no, essentially no long-term competitive advantage. It's a car, right? Uh, it's an electric engine. These aren't new, these, these aren't like the iPhone, right? These are electric engines and vehicles. I mean, the wheel was invented, I don't know, a couple of million years ago. <laughs> the car, 100 years ago, electric engine, I don't know, like ever since electric, in, electric induction was, was discovered. <laughs> well, what's his name anyway? So we're talking about ridiculous valuations here. We've got a couple of ridiculous valuations here, like two, two trillion just in two stupid examples. And this drop here was those two trillion dollars, right? And the trigger, one of them, ridiculous valuations, was, was, was increased rates. So we've seen what happens in the Australian market just in a couple of days when the rates can go um, just start to trickle into reality, okay? It's gonna be interesting, they've got a long way to go. And when we look at like the, the US end of the curve, well, it started to do the same thing. Right? So it was a little bit ahead of time of the, the Australian market actually. But the US inflation is more like 5%, the Australian one's like not even three, it's like two and a half percent, okay? So um, these rates in the US, they've got a long way to go and the central bank in the US hasn't really lost the battle with the market yet. So if and when they do, when they're with their little la uh, la la land money printing world, you know, their rates could easily go up to tick up this level where it last ratcheted down, right? That's like another 100 points. And then the next stop would be here, right? Now, with, with 5% inflation, I mean, I don't think that's gonna be sustained, but, you know, it'll be like a similar, like Australian, like, you know, historic, you know, two, maybe 3% inflation. 
you know, you've got to get, you're going to get rates that are up here, like, you know, 200 points higher than where they are now, just in the shorter, short end. That can happen pretty quickly. You can see in 2018, it happened pretty quickly, right? It's just over a course of like, you know, what's that? That was like June 2017 to August 2018. So that was um, a bit over, not, not even a year, right? So 10 months, it can happen pretty quickly. Some of these other moves, they are very sharp and sudden moves, like all of them, right? You know, you know, February to to, to a no, November, like 10 months, okay? So this could happen very quickly in the coming months, and that will be a very rude shock because as these moves like 100 points, that is going to flatten the curve, right? The yield curve, because these are already at 100, 160 points, so you add another 100 points in there, that could flatten these ones pretty quickly, even if the 10 years kind of normalized to, like say, this level, okay, so that's two, 224, so that could be like, you know, 50, 75 points on the spread, which historically is actually reasonably flat. That flattening, as the US Central Bank has, as happens to what, what's happening in Australia where they kind of lose control and lose confidence in the market, um, that could then trigger my, you know, the scenario I'm kind of, you know, considering, is that could then consider similar, you know, bearish flattening, um, you know, driven by the front of the yield curve, here as what happened back here. We've got some ridiculous valuations, and it could all come tumbling down, and that, of course, will spell a big correction in the U.S. main equities market, the the S and P just as this broke the bottom of the range and went down further, this could break the bottom of the range and go down further. The bottom of the range, although it sounds big, you know, 35%, that would not even potentially break, 30% could, may not even break the bottom of the range, right? Um, give it a little bit of time to eat off the clock there, right? So from there, so from the peak here to there, call it like 17% just to the bottom of the range. Um, you know, then if it went down to a key resistance level, support level here, that could be like 40%. Up there, it could be 30%. That would be in line with the corrections we've seen here when rates trigger or triggered a review of lofty valuations of things that turned out to be somewhat worthless. Anyway, look, that's it uh, for me today. But uh, you know, really, there's a warning sign um, in the markets that we've seen. We've seen it in New Zealand. Um, we've seen it in Australia now, where this is the floodgates starting to open for a reversal of some very long-term monetary policies which have fueled lofty valuations and it could all come tumbling down. That's, uh, you know, who knows, maybe, maybe not, but I'm short the bonds, I've been short the bonds, that's how I'm positioned for this scenario.